Hey and welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt, the printing nerd, and in this video I will try to answer a couple of questions you've asked in Discord or on YouTube about me, the project and the printer. For my first question, I picked one from Redfrog. He asked me how many 3D printers I have in total. The answer is a couple. Most of them are at least tuned. A handful of them is self-built and they are based on different designs. I picked up this question because it allows me to speak about my printers. But since this would fill up hours of video time, I will focus on one printer per Q&A episode, starting with my Ender 3 S1. The Ender 3 is my main prototyping printer for the 100. Equipped with the same Volcano and CHT nozzle combo as the 100, but with a 0.8 nozzle, it's capable to melt filament at 135 cubic millimeters. Driven by the Orbiter 2, this hot end is able to melt 1 kilogram of filament in under 6 hours. For reference, printing big frame parts of the 100 takes under 80 minutes on this printer. But such high melting power also needs strong part cooling. Equipped with two 5015 blower fans, the cooling power is more than twice as high as for the 100. The higher cooling power is reached because of extreme short fan ducts that have almost no back pressure. The whole tool head is driven by a custom PCB from NBR that made wiring so much easier since it allows you to use normal cable connectors rather than those vendor specific reality uses. Besides of the tool head, I've also changed the motion system to linear rails to remove motion artifacts caused by the rollers. Equipped with linear rails, the whole construction is more robust which allows higher speeds due to less vibration. Speaking of vibration, since bed slingers are limited by the weight of the y-axis, I've decided to replace the y-carriage by a carbon fiber one. Also, I'd milled down the center part of the aluminium heat plate to 2 mm to reduce even more weight. With this modification, the printer is able to run speed boats at 6 minutes 22 with the small stock and the free motors. Also, since the printer stands about 2 meters away from my main PC, where I work all the day, it had to be silent. So, I've changed the fans to proper ones, reduced their voltage with buck converters and enclosed the whole printer. That not only reduces the noise level, but it also allowed me to print ABS since it has an integrated active coal filter combined with a HEPA filter. The whole enclosure is complete custom made. If you like to learn more about it, ask for a review in the comments. With all of those modifications, the Ender 3 S1 is the fastest printer in my workshop. And speed is the property that matters most for me when I'm working on new prototypes. But let's go back to your questions. The question that was asked the most was about the size of the printer. Could you make a design for an Ender 3 print bed? Or even a bigger print bed? Why the print bed is so small? Well, in my introduction video I've talked a lot about the mechanical advantages of a smaller construction. So if you like to learn more about that, please watch or rewatch that video. But there is another perspective on this question that I would like to share with you. For many of you, the 100 is their second printer. You already have a big printer that has a print bed that is at least 230 by 230 millimeters big. So why do you want a second one? I've asked that question to a couple of people in Discord and their answer most of them gave me was versatility. Well, here lies one of the biggest misunderstandings when it comes to 3D printing. When we're talking about printers, we're expecting a fire and forget solution. On a normal printer, we don't have to recalibrate the printer when the paper was changed, we don't have to set the position for the prints, nor the font or the resolution for the prints. We click on the print button and a couple of seconds later, we have a sheet of paper with the text and the graphics in our hand. For 3D printing, this is different. There are many properties that enhance the quality or the speed of a certain piece you want to print, a couple of them are good practice, but if you plan to print as fast as possible with your printer, you have to learn most of the slicer and firmware parameters and even more important, you have to get the experience which of them might affect the piece you want to print the most. 
So this fire and forget solution for the 3D printing is only possible for print speeds smaller than 100 millimeters per second. And even at those slow speeds, there are situations where your standard quality profile approach does not work because warping happens or supports are not sticking right and many other problems. Coming back to the initial question, funny enough, I've chose the size of the print bed because of the versatility it gives to you. But my definition of versatile was in terms of room for error. Error on building, error on part sourcing and error on slicer configuration. Having a smaller print bed means you could do a proper Bowden setup with pressure advanced enabled, since the Bowden tube is short enough. Pressure advanced makes printing of smaller parts way easier. No blobbing, less stringing, less clocking, less retraction. But now you say, hey, uh, what about direct drive extruders? Well, direct drive means at least 80 to 120 grams more weight on your tool head, which causes more vibration artifacts and is even harder to compensate for speeds over 240 millimeters per second, since the center of gravity on the tool head changed by a lot. The heaviest part of the tool head is now the motor and it's also at the highest position of the tool head. This makes building a tool head much more complex. Also reducing the size means that the belt paths might be way shorter and therefore looser which causes much less resistance on the motors. Less resistance on the motors means more torque for moving the tool head, increasing its speeds and its acceleration with lesser run current. And last but not least, energy consumption. My Ender 3 print bed runs on average at 155 watts per hour while printing. With less than 60 watts per hour, the Ender 2 Pro print bed consumes less than half of the power the Ender 3 would need. That means we could use a smaller and cheaper power supply while saving a bit of money on power consumption. Having a bit room for error so that you have a better time when building this printer seems for me to be a good deal. And at the end, when you build your first printer by your own, the second one is much easier. So you might build a mod like the people in Discord. Right now we have two mods that focus on the 100 build for a Ender 3 print bed. But be warned, acceleration does not scale linear. The next question I've picked was on structural decisions. Why lead screws and not belted C? Why don't you use linear rails? And why you aren't using bigger motors with higher torque? For me, it was important to have a package that was focused on speed printing while being as affordable as possible. Let's think a bit about changes like belted C. Even on a smaller print bed like the print bed of the 100, you would need more than one motor to handle the weight of the print bed, so you would choose at least three motors to be able to use auto bed leveling. But using three motors for Z means you would need a bigger board with more drivers. So you have to spend at least 30 bucks more for the motors, 40 bucks more for the board and another 15 bucks for the drivers. So you have to pay almost $100 more for potentially a bit less ringing but only if the tension on all C motor belts is equal. For me, it was a small improvement for an almost 30% higher price point. Printer building is a journey that never ends. Let's go back to your childhood. Remember, it was your birthday and as present, you got the new Lego pneumatic cran. You built it, you played with it and two days later, you destroyed it so that you could rebuild it again. For me, it's similar with the journey you make on building a 3D printer. It never ends because there is always something you could optimize. To print faster, to print in a better quality, um, that the printer looks nicer or that the printer gets a new feature. But the most important thing is to set a baseline for you to start. Having a base printer is a starting point for further development by choosing a mod you like or even developing your own mod. I want to close this Q&A session with a question from Biocakes. 
He asked me if there's a chance for a kit with all required parts in the future. Uh, the answer is yes, there will be a kit, but not in the near future. Um, those who follow my development diary on Hackaday know that I'm working on a video in which I will compare rods and bearings from different manufacturers in terms of quality and speed. After this video series is released, I will look for partners that want to develop a kit with me for the upcoming release, the version 1.1 in fall of this year. I can't say if it's realistic that this kit will be ready with the release of version 1.1, but what I can say for sure is that it will be based on the bill of material for version 1.1. By the way, if you want to get a sneak peek on the features that will be part of the upcoming printer release, consider becoming a Patreon. For my Patreons, I release all my changes on the printer on a weekly basis. Also, I created a bill of material that contains AliExpress links to all parts I've used to create my first prototype of the 100. So that's it for today. All questions were answered, but before we end this video, I would like to introduce to you to a new format that comes at the end of every video, starting with this video, the community shoutouts. But before that, have you already subscribed to my channel? You know, this project is 100% open source and our goal is to reach as many people as possible to share our designs and our ideas with them. Therefore, we have to be visible on YouTube. Becoming a subscriber and hitting the like button helps us to be visible on the YouTube's algorithm for suggesting this video to other people. So that's it for today. Now let's end this video with the community shoutout. Today's shoutout goes to It Convict. He was one of the first people that decided to build the 100 and man, his printer is fast. I'm a bit scary with people like him it's only a matter of time until my personal speed benchy record gets shattered.